guys, welcome back to another episode of In-Depth Angling. I'm excited to be recording this today as we are going to take a look into the crappie pre-spawn patterns, locations, tips, and techniques on Stockton Lake, breaking down everything you need to know to catch more crappie this spring. Be sure to stay with us until the end of the video. I'm going to be showing some spots out on the lake where you can go catch some nice slice slab crappie yourself. Before I go into covering everything in this video, if you guys are new to the channel, fish Stockton Lake, or want to catch more crappie, if you would be so kind as to consider subscribing to support me make videos like this for you and keep you in the loop for when new videos come out on the channel so you don't miss out on new content. Let's dive into this thing. There are both white and black crappie in Stockton Lake and they feed primarily on shad and other small bait fish. Pre-spawn starts on the lake once water temperatures rise up to the upper 40s and lasts until the crappie begin to spawn later in the spring when water temperatures reach the mid 50s. With this rise in temperature as the days get longer, the crappie begin to transition from their wintertime haunts to areas just outside of spawning locations with nearby deep water access and bait fish. The lake heats up unevenly as the lake stretches out across 298 miles of shoreline and is created by the dam at the north end of the two major river channels merging up here. This is the end of the lake up here where the dam is at. The river channels from the Little Sack and Sack River arms merge down here in a V-shape. They have the deepest, widest section of the lake down here. The upper arms of the lake are a lot narrower, uh, dingier water. River runoff comes in through there. There's a lot more creek channels from these bigger creek coves that come in, a um, lot more feeder water that just runs off into the lake. It heats up and cools down that area of the lake a lot faster than the northern section, which is a lot more stable, deeper, and wider. This area here will be the first to heat up during the pre-spawn, and those crappie will be in pre-spawn first of any area on the lake up here. Water temperature is a key factor in when that will happen, and the timing varies from year to year based on the weather Stockton Lake gets. But you will start to see a big shift in locations where those crappie are starting to move out of their winter locations and move up to the shallower areas and stage of their pre-spawn uh, once water temperatures reach the upper 40s. Creek channels act as highways for crappie and bait fish during the pre-spawn as they move up to the warming shallows of the lake. From the old river channels to the creek beds and secondary points that are further into the coves, the crappie move out from deep water and start working their way up through these creek beds. As you guys can see here on the map, there's an old submerged bridge and an old road bed that's down here. And the old creek beds is blue dotted line that runs kind of throughout the whole cove here. Those fish will kind of ride along those ditches and where that used to be a creek bed is kind of a ditch that's down in there now. They ride out in that deeper water to come up and use those and navigate up here to the shallow areas uh, and eventually they'll move back all the way to the ends of these coves here to the back where the new rainwater is running in at and their shallow gravel banks for them to go spawn to. They're going to stage just outside of that. They like these secondary points that are in this cove here and they also are going to stage up just along some of these steeper banks here where they have that deep water access nearby and can move up shallow to feed and back down into the depths without having to move very far at all and just kind of stay right outside of those spawning areas until they're ready to move up and actually go do their thing once the water temperature warms up enough into the 50s. Having brush piles or standing timber in an area can help attract pre-spawn crappie as they ambush bay fish and feed heavily ahead of the spawn, but not all brush piles or sections of standing timber are going to hold crappie this time of year. Having that deep water access like I showed you guys on Navionics in this cove here next to this woody structure is the first thing I'm going to be looking at when I'm searching out for a place to fish during the pre-spawn. This is a MDC's brush pile and fish attractor map that I'll have linked down there in the description below if you want to go and check this out. It tells you guys stuff about what year these brush piles are placed in here and it tells you uh, the coordinates for them as well. It tells you the type that they put in here. These are cedars. So for those fish to be moving in here and getting ready to pre-spawn, stage up before they move up into these shallow pockets. Those are going to be great little brush piles for those fish to sit out on until they're ready to go up and do their thing. Bait fish will still be using those creek channels a lot. Uh, some of the crappie will winter in those areas as well, so you're going to have kind of an overlap between those wintering fish and those pre-spawn fish in some of these areas I'm going to show you today. Just because water temperature is kind of in that transitional phase for those fish, not all the fish move up to go spawn at once, not all the fish move up into pre-spawn at once. It's a big deal to focus on whether and water temperature to find out the timing of when that'll all be happening but just going out and trying to find those deep water access areas with woody structure nearby 
is going to be a huge key to help you finding those fish. This can be at the mouth of the cove or towards the back depending on how deep a given cove gets. I tried to look for woody structure in there at least next to eight foot of water to start off. Crappie will have a tendency to go shallower than eight feet of water to feed on warmer days or when warmer spring rains flow into the back of creek coves. Like this one here, there could be some runoff coming into the back of both of these sections. There's going to be crappie that'll move up there. The bait fish will move up there. If we have like a 65, 70 degree day during March and we have water temperatures that's still in the mid 40s, those fish will move off of those brush piles that we have sitting out here in the middle of this cove, slide up there to those back areas, and they might feed for a couple hours, might be half a day. Really is dependent on how long that water is going to stay warm there from that nice rain that we just got and then once those bait fish move out they're eating up or whatever happens to them um, those crappie will slide back out deep crappie also tend to move out deeper either off of two drop offs or out to main lake points or further into the creek channels whenever we have cold fronts so when they have those couple brush piles that are sitting here on this map and then this right here is the old bridge that i showed you so if we have a cold front they might slide off deeper off to the edge of these drop offs here off these secondary points a little bit down and suspend closer towards the bottom hold tighter the cover or they can come all the way out here by uh, this old road bed and suspend around that structure that's down there as well. And that's really what you're going to be looking for in areas. You want to have there to be some variety in depth, some variety in some structure, and have everything be kind of close depth-wise. You don't want to have 50 foot of water be half a mile away from the 8 to 10 foot range. You want it to be just really short distances between those so those fish can move up and down through that water column with ease. I'm going to take you guys down here to a little bit of a larger creek cove and show you how I would like to divide this up and uh, fish it here. This is a big creek cove here. On my map here it says that it is called Birch Branch. The old river channel swings right up here against this point. That's going to be a great area for those crappie to be sitting at during the winter time. And early pre-spawn stages they'll still be sitting out here as they start to move up in. And there's several different road beds and old bridges that are submerged here. There's Lots of different creek beds, flooded timber, a few different brush piles that are around, but it's mostly just standing trees in through here. And it can be kind of overwhelming to an angler to try to figure out what trees are going to be holding the fish, what creek bed, what depth, how do I figure this out, how do I start to get a pattern going. What I like to do is I like to divide this up into thirds. So the front mouth of this cove here, I'll take a third of the cove that's leading out here towards the main channel, and that'll be my one third. The middle section here, the next third of the cove, I'll divide that up. That'll be my second third. And then the back third here towards the very end of the shallows will be my last third. I'll start out in the last third or the front third of the cove. And I'll start working my way in or out of the cove depending on which way I'm going. So let's say I'm coming from the river channel out here and working my way into this cove. If I'm fishing along and I'm starting to catch uh, a couple fish, but it's not really very consistent, there's not very many big schools, there's just a couple of them moving in and out, uh, I'm going to keep moving down here to the second third. And you still keep getting a couple fish here and there, but they're not really very consistent and you're not catching a lot of great numbers, not big schools of fish. Uh, if you have electronics, you can scan around, try to find some of those bigger schools and just see if they're not feeding, if you're not catching them, or if you got the wrong depth. But I try to cover water fairly quickly while I'm doing this. I'm trying to figure out what areas of these coves these fish are relating to. And I'll move back here to the back third of this cove, fishing fairly quickly with jigs, casting out or reeling up vertically through schools of crappie. And let's say I get to the back third of this cove here and I'm starting to catch several nice sized crappie. I'm starting to see bigger schools of them and the bite's starting to turn on a little bit more for me than it was in the first two thirds of the cove. I'm gonna take that information that I have there and I'm going to go to similar coves like this and fish the same areas that they have. Uh, this is going to help me get fish in the boat quicker and establish a pattern that I can follow to speed up the search. Crappie can move from one area to the next this time of year quickly from water temperature change to the unpredictable Missouri spring weather that can affect crappie this time of year patterns usually don't last for more than a few days making it tough for anglers to keep up. 
Depending on water clarity, I use jigs to cover water both casting out and jigging vertical through schools of crappie that suspend near structure. In dirty or stained water conditions, I like to use louder, brighter colors such as chartreuse, yellow, pink, orange, or other bright colors to stand out and be a little bit more visible to the fish. In clear water conditions, I like to use more natural colors that look more like shad such as white, silver, and blue. There are several different areas in the lake that have dirtier water compared to the northern end. Like I said earlier, this is going to be your big open area here. This is going to be the last area to warm up. Those fish are going to stay in their winter patterns on the north side of the lake closer towards Stockton Dam the longest. If you're wanting to get into the pre-spawn bite a little bit sooner, I would recommend coming up here towards some of these river arms on the southern sections of the lake or even into the back of some of these larger creek coves. The shallower water will heat up faster. The dirtier water actually helps that sunlight hit that and warm that area up quicker. So these areas on these river arms here have dirtier water. That'll help warm it up. That rain water that comes in during the spring is typically a little bit warmer than what the water temperature is. That also helps heat that water up. So this is going to be a couple weeks ahead of where the rest of the northern section is as far as how close we are to being into the pre-spawn and then the spawn. This area will be the quickest to go. If you're wanting to get into a early pre-spawn bite, come up here and fish out of the Mutton Creek area, Work Bluff. You can fish out of Aldrich as well over here on the other end of the lake. Crappie are cold-blooded, making their metabolisms dependent on the water temperature they are in. As the water rises into the 50s this time of year, they begin to eat more. So you're going to have more aggressive fish. You're going to have fish that are a little bit more willing to chase and the fish that are more active. So I'm always looking for more active fish. My personal preference is to come up here and fish these areas and uh, try to go catch some of those more active fish. They're usually a lot shallower by this time uh, as opposed to the northern end. There's so many different creek coves in here. The main lake flats can hold some decent sized fish on them too. This time of year as they come out of these old river channels they can pop up here onto some of these flats. If you can find some nice brush piles that the Department of Conservation has put out or even just local fishermen have put out over the years, you can go out there and really start to centralize your targets onto some of those and catch nice schools of crappie around those brush piles. It'll help you find those fish and get on nice numbers of them quicker. Crappie feed more and more aggressively as the water temperature warms up and they prepare ahead for the spawn. The brush piles that are out here on the main lake flat as well can hold some nice sized crappie and decent schools of them but you got to be mindful of the year you don't want to be trying to fish a lot of these ones that have been placed in here in 2012 or you know closer to 10 years ago those brush piles that are made of wood have pretty much decayed and there's hardly anything left to them so unless they have replaced them I would recommend uh, trying to avoid those and go after something that's a little bit more recent this one here's a 2011 for example I would avoid that one I'd avoid this 2012 one, I'd avoid this 2012 one, and that 2012 one. If you come down here, a lot of these in this section are all old. So I'm not going to be focusing a whole lot down in this section of those brush piles. Uh, like I said, this area in here has tons of standing timber, so those fish are going to be relating a lot more to that at this point than those brush piles. These are all pretty much old. Um, as you move up here, onto the lake you start to get into more of these recent ones like this one here is a 2019 and that was going to be one that's going to be just about right it's going to be seasoned it's going to be good algae growth on it and some decent depth so fish both in pre-spawn and in winter phases are going to be staging up on that area right there i'll zoom in here for you guys a little bit so you can see how many of these there are there's quite a few on this area that they have put in in 2019 in 2015 this one was placed here, but they've also replaced it with the 2019 one. So this one is going to be good. Um, ones that are kind of sitting out here in the middle of these creek channels are going to be great if you can find one that's in the right year. This is a nice brush pile here off this secondary point next to this campground area. Uh, there's also one right in the middle of the old creek channel here. And they're both put in 2019. Those are going to be nice and seasoned. There's going to be algae growth on them. Bait fish are going to be using them to feed on. And the crop are going to be using them to ambush the bait fish around. So those are going to be great areas to go look for those pre-spawn crappie. There's several of them across the whole lake as well. 
I'll zoom out here and just show you all these little orange dots here are different brush piles. Again, I'll have this linked in the description below if you are interested in going and looking at some of these. I really like the ones that have intersecting channels next to them on these bigger secondary points, especially if there's major creek coves there. This is one I talked about in the winter time, but they're also going to be on during the pre-spawn as well. This is newer stuff. There's a 2015 one here, a 2015 one, and a 2022. They've replaced this one uh, this last year so. They're going to be continuing to have fish sit on that section right there. Lots of crappie will be moving in and out of these two different branches. They have to intersect either from the left side or your right side on your screen. They're going to have to move in and out of their wintering holes and back into there. So that's going to be kind of an intercepting spot that you can stage up on and be able to pinpoint and target some of those fishes that are transitioning in and out of that winter phase. As you move back in here to some of these other creek coves, right in the middle of these old creek channels, some newer ones that they've put in there in 2022. There's one further back in here in 2015. Some of these other ones in here, 2010, not really going to be there anymore. 2015, there might be some stuff on it. They're kind of wild cards after they've been in there for about seven or eight years. If you start to find some fish towards the backs of these coves, don't be too afraid to come back out here and fish some of these other areas that are in the middle of these creek channels as well. Like I said before, not all the crappie will move at one time as the water temperature can vary several degrees. The shallows will warm up faster. So don't be afraid to move up shallow. Don't be afraid to move out deep. See where the fish are day to day. They change quite a bit. There is 24,900 acres of water that's on Stockton Lake. So there's a lot of surface area for that sun to heat up during the this time of year. Crappie move out to those two creek channels, the steeper banks, the points, the drop-offs, brush piles, standing trees. The only place that they're really moving out of uh, being anymore is the old river channel on the main lake. That's really more of a winter area. They're going to be there in the beginning part of pre-spawn as you get further and closer towards the spawn into the later cycle as we move into mid-spring when the water temperature is generally climbing up into those mid-50s. Start to be looking a lot more of those fish to be just on the outside of these spawning areas. So if they're going to spawn in the back of this cove here, I'd be looking for them to be moved in right along some of these steeper banks. This left side here is a steeper bank. I'll flip over to Navionics and show you guys this real quick here. So you guys can see right off of this point here, we have a nice little creek channel. It drops off into about 15 foot of water. And those are going to be great areas, especially if you can find some bait fish that are staged up in there. Those crop will be there very, very thick and be ready to go back up into this creek area and find those flat pea gravel banks as we get into the middle of the spring. Moving down here onto the northern section of the lake, a lot of these coves are deeper than what areas of the main channel in those southern sections and arms of the lake up the riverway. Uh, this is a very big creek cove that's here. That by Indian Ridge. Talked about this in the wintertime crappie video. If you guys haven't seen that, I'll link it down in the description below for you guys to go check that one out as well. But there's tons of flooded timber in here, different depths, bottoms out over here almost at like 60 foot at the mouth of this cove. So fish have plenty of water in this cove to winter in and stay there all winter. They don't really ever need to leave this cove. And there's tons of structure in here for those fish. There's a big creek area back here. Lots of new water run in. This will heat up a lot faster than the rest of this cove. Do not be surprised Price to find those crappie moved up shallow, even if the main channel is going to be still into the 40s. The back of this cove here might be all the way up to 50 degrees. So it can change by a few degrees and that's enough for those fish to move up and be at a whole nother uh, section of the coves that are up here as opposed to what they might be out there on the main channel. They might be a lot more actively feeding and further shallow than what you might think. So make sure to go and explore the backs of these areas. They can be wildly different from what the rest of the lake is showing you on your graphs and water temperature. I expect the crappie to stage out here along this old submerged roadbed and bridge and in some of these different trees in the back of this cove here. After they start getting into like the 20 and 30 foot range and shallower, they can suspend out here in the middle of this creek channel if they have a cold front. The bite's going to get a little tougher, but there's plenty of room for them to drop off into that deeper structure and not really have to go very far. So if you have another warm day or a nice warm rain, any these creek inlets back in here will pull pull those fish right back up and they'll be shallow again and very actively feeding. So easy targets for fishermen and should make for some awesome fishing this early spring. There is a 10 inch length limit on Stockton that allows crappie to reach larger sizes and have a bigger population of quality fish in the lake. The Missouri Department of Conservation Electrofishing Survey samples from 2022 found 62% of white crappie were over the 10 inch minimum length limit and 56% of the black crappie measured in over the 10 inches as well. This is going to make for a great year of fishing out on 
on Stockton Lake. So be sure to get out there early this spring and get a line wet. Hope this helped you learn something about Stockton Lake or the spring crappie fishing it has to offer. And that this helps you pattern crappie on the lake so you can intercept crappies in their early spring transition phases and get them all the way up to where they're getting ready to spawn and everything in between. Thank you to everyone who stayed to the end of the video. I really appreciate all the new subscribers that have been watching this and making this channel grow. I cannot thank you enough because without you, this channel does not exist. So thanks to you for supporting me make more content like this for you. Till next time, tight lines and remember to explore deeper. There's more out there. Thank you.